Morning, kiddies. You don't really want to see me like this, do you? Um, I'm just going to nip to the feed store and get some life aid because I've run out. Uh, one of the calves is getting far too much milk and it's shitting itself out. So I'm just worried. Yeah, I just want to give it a little bit of a boost, to be honest. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take its mum and put it on the outside of the pen and leave the calf on the inside so that it's not getting on all the time because it literally is guzzling that milk. It's like an education. Minuets. Look at this, check your colostrum quality. So we're just going to book out the handling system where the black and white calves are. But we've just decided this after we've put a bail in. So we're just going to take the bail back out and then we're going to book out. Born last night to a black Angus. If you're watching the live with me and Joe, her bag is literally down to the floor. So the calf will, I know, struggle to get on um, to find actually find the tip because they're literally that big. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have her before I get killed by a bell. I'll have her in as well while we muck out, um, just because I've moved the calves out of the way. Not because she's nasty in any way. Um, just to help the car find and make sure it's found the tit, um, just to avoid any problems. More lower. Ed, it's just so low, it doesn't really know where to go. Oh, a chicken kind of not find it. Yeah, turn, turn, here. A bit lower, a bit lower. Here, 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 here. There, oh, it tastes like. Lady! Can't be hard, go down there. Go on. Get on. Get on. Get on. Get on. Shh. Hello, come on. It's slippery, so I'm just going to get a load of straw and put it underneath her in the handling system because when they put the legs in, it's metal and they slide forwards. Hat is what we wanted. Right, can you find it again on your own? Go on. No. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, it's massive. How can you miss it? Stop it. I was like 98% sure it had been on. But you can never tell. I am your mother. You listen to me. Stop all the men slaying, no one's listening. So I'm just gonna stick some more iodine on this calf and I'll show you me doing it because often it's a bit of a rush job and I don't really get to video it because the cows could be slightly dodgy when they've just given birth. So I don't tend to mess around, but I'll show you because this one's obviously locked in a head yoke. So this dangly thing here, for those of you who don't already know, is a belly button. That is their navel and infections. Basically, if you look, I'll do it anyway. It's a tube and all that's what connected the calf to the cow, that little tube in there. And there's loads of veins and blood supply and things like that. Um, so that's where infection can enter because that is directly, oh my God, I'm being attacked. I'm being beaten up by a tiny calf. Ah, my God, it is, it's kicking me. <laughs> Stop it.
Do you mind? I used to just use um, a tiny little bit of iodine. Now I stick it on the navel and I also tip the remainder on the back of the calf and none of the cow because we are severely iodine deficient. So they are bolused with high iodine mineral boluses. They then have tablets in their water that I've showed you before. I can actually show you because they'll probably need replenishing. So these are cows that are not in calf. Um, as you can see, they are in tip top condition because nothing else has been taken away from them. Um, somebody had commented last night saying, who does our nutrition? Um, we're not a dairy farm, we're a beef farm for one. Um, they're on grass silage all the time. Um, we occasionally throw some beet in there. Um, young stock and things get fed up. These are literally on a grass-based diet. As you can see, we have slimmed down the calving cows because we have had major issues before now with them being too fat. There is a reason why they look skinnier because we've put them on a diet. Because otherwise, you'd be calving cows that are looking like this. And obviously, the harder calving, we know that. Like, if you're a farmer, you know that. And like, there was a case of like, I was pulling out lumps of fat, like big yellow globular horrible fat when I was calving these cows because the cows were so fat. So anyway, they've gone on a diet. That's why. If any of you go, oh God, they look a bit skinny. We've done it for a reason because um, they're easier calving, basically. It's like people, isn't it? You know, if you're overweight, you're going to be, you know, it's it, overweight is just as unhealthy as underweight. Do you know what I mean? So it's trying to find that right balance of how much they should be getting. And in this bag, can you see there's some tablets? They look just like that. And they sit over the water like this. And the cows don't notice them, so they don't mess with them, to be honest, because they're just hung just below the water line. And every time the water runs, it obviously runs through these iodine tablets. So that's one way that we did it. Um, and then obviously I, I iodine them on their backs when the calves are born, just to give them that little bit of extra boost. We have major issues. I can't even tell you, major, major issues and major losses as well. Um, I'll find some pictures of how big the calves were. So we actually changed a bull. We got a bull, all the calves popped out. They're all massive, lethargic, dopey, stupid tongs. <laughs> they couldn't suck. Oh, it was horrendous. They all like petered out and went downhill. We had numerous calves to the vets. We had postmortems done. We had calves pop out on the ground and we took them to the vet before they'd even taken the second breath just to get them checked over to see if it wasn't something we were doing wrong. Nothing. I'll put some pictures in of how big they were. They were heavier than me by far, like double my weight. It was crazy. Never, they just never get going. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes they'd drop out and they wouldn't take a breath quite often. They'd just like... They'd blink, the heart would be beating, they'd never take a breath. Oh, it, honestly, I can't even tell you how upsetting it was. It was, we were, we were completely at our wits end. Like, Roy was really at his wits end. Um, things like retaining afterbirths. A lot of retained afterbirths, especially in heifers. Originally, I thought it was retained afterbirths in Angus's, and I was blaming the breed. It wasn't, it was heifers, because apparently they're more susceptible to an iodine deficiency than a cow. But as a farmer, when someone says to you, how's calving going, you don't say, oh, I'm losing loads of calves, do you? You say, oh yeah, it's grand, yeah, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. No one talks because everyone's terrified that they're gonna look down on you if you're doing something wrong, that you say everything's perfect. And that isn't the case. So we ended up going and getting some calves from Chas Cow, that one's there. And he was talking about, um, he used to rent some land across the road from us, literally across the road. And we told him about our problems and he went, oh yeah, yeah, when we were there, we had really like big problems with iodine deficiency. And we went, what? Literally, what? And we'd had vets look at it, we'd had post-motion, we'd had, we'd had all sorts, honestly. And it took a mate to just say, yeah, we had problems too. Talking, talking's everything. Someone learned something from me making a tit on the internet of myself, job done. Oh, those of you who are keep asking, baby lamb that was stuck in the fence did not make it. It died overnight. Um, it was just, curled up in the corner like it was asleep and all of these guys were all like led around it bless it um i don't know i couldn't have actually done anything more i don't think oh yes what a legend that is good that is good good in all very seriousness 
the legalities behind butchering your own animal. That there in that bag is what me and Roy have just bagged up. It was the head complete with spinal cord, ear tag, um, all the entrails from out of the body and the four feet, the, uh, the skin, I was gonna say the fleece then. The skin, however, is in front of me here. I'm gonna tan it myself. So I don't know what you think of that or if you've got any experience of it. I haven't got a clue. I'd only decided this half an hour ago when I was gonna throw it in that bag. Roy wasn't gonna come and help me and I was trying to put all these intestines in this bag on my own and it was, it was pretty grim, but fairly comical to be honest. Anyway, legalities behind butchering your own animal. That's for the freezer, it's for our freezer. We're not selling it, it's ours, it's, it's mine. It's going in my freezer feeding my children. Um, if you were selling it, it's a whole different thing, I think. But as it's a home kill, done by a professional, obviously, the bits and bobs are in here. I'm not gonna show you, don't even think that. I'm not gonna show you, it's, it's not, I don't think it, um, I don't think anyone could learn anything from me showing it you. It, it's pretty rank. Um, the children did watch on for some of it, which was, in an educational sense, I think it's good for them to know where the food comes from. Mm, maybe I did go, or maybe not, but do you know what, they were fine about it, so you know, you know where your food comes from. The animal itself is now skinless, intestineless. It's in half and it's hanging. It'll hang, I think, is it something like 28 days? I could be totally wrong. Anyway, it's gonna hang for a while before he does anything with it. Then after that, we, um, the place where it's gone to uh, has a, a proper chilly unit. It's not just some back end thing. It's, he has a proper chilly unit where he keeps these carcasses um, and he's gonna budget for us and send it back and it's gonna go in uh, our freezer. And all joking aside, it's gonna save us a fortune. And I mean that. Um, it's gonna help us out money wise because yeah, it's expensive, isn't it, buying buying food. I went to the co-op last night and me and Anna, um, we'd, we've actually run out of sausages from the pigs last year, so Joe and Ollie will be next. Um, don't tell them. And <laughs> a chicken, uh, two chicken breasts were five, 575. Sorry? 575 for two chicken breasts. That's all well and good if I thought that the money was going to the farmer that produced the chicken, but I know damn well it ain't going to the farmer. Um, and a whole chicken was five ninety five, so we got a whole chicken. I very much doubt the farmer gets um, any of that, to be honest. So, um, I'm just going to go around the sheep. Roy's making tea. I've just cleaned all the intestines up. I've just put the wash on. Got to um, wash the yard of all the gooey bits that we don't want hanging about. The chickens have had... I'm gonna look on the internet very quickly before I even move that, uh, not a fleece, a skin, a skin. Um, Cause it's gorgeous, do you wanna see? Look away if you don't like gross things, but seriously. Yes, isn't it beautiful? She was a bonny cow, like. It's a waste. Um, I definitely think that's a waste if I don't do anything with it. Spider cat, spider cat. It's Thanks so much for watching. Really sorry I didn't show the whole process. Roy banned me from doing it, blame him. Um, I did actually record it all, so if you want to send it to you on WhatsApp or something, let me know. <laughs>